important man here when we come into the village with the dark triplets. Mr. Martin George, welcome back again to In the Village with the Dark Triplets on WZY 95.9 FM. Tonight, yes, so far, good, tonight evening we're... To you and good evening to your listeners. It's always a pleasure to be able to share ideas and views and exchange thoughts and have discussions with you guys on this show. Thank you so much. We already have inside with us, you know, some, some of us tonight, some people are going to be here or not going to be here. We have the Phantom with us. So we only have about two thirds of the Dark Triplet with us. And I'm sure Tommy's going to be joining us lately. You know, I'm not sure if Diana is going to be joining us tonight. But, but Mr. George, um, what's going on in Trinidad and Tobago with the Commissioner of Police? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it seemed like, you know, it, 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 it but, but let me ask this question, right? Now, did you sit on the PS, the, the Police Service Commission, previously? Yes, I served for nine years. I'm one of the longest serving members previously. So you kind of know about the, 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 the policies and procedures regarding the Police Service Commission. Will that be accurate? Well, yes, that's accurate. Mm -hmm. So, so... Tell us from the beginning now, who, who is Gary Griffith's boss? Who is his boss? Okay, the way it works, it's, it's a strange system we have in Trinidad and Tobago, um, particularly when you have a scenario where the person is, um, you know, taken from outside the ranks of the service. What you have is that the Ministry of National Security would normally prepare a contract. Um, it has usually been like a three-year contract for that individual. So the Ministry of National Security is the employer. But the Police Service Commission is constitutionally um, given the powers to make the appointment to the Office of Commissioner. So in other words, it's a strange bifurcated system whereby you have the employer on the one hand being the Minister of National Security, the Ministry of National Security, and the appointer, the, the, the body that appoints you to the office be in the Police Service Commission. And similarly, the Police Service Commission is the body that can disappoint you from office. Now, where it gets interesting is when you have a scenario where the person's contract ends. Because if your contract to act and to function in the role of commissioner of police is at an end, then the question remains as to can you then um, really hold that office? So I think that is what um, may have occurred here in terms of the end of the contract and the desire to start the process again and look, you know, for new candidates and, you know, um, open the field as, as such. But the thing is, it ought to have been managed much better and much, you know, more efficiently, given the fact that you would have known from the start that this person is on a three-year contract. So if that end of contract was of significance to your being able to either continue the person in office or having to start a new search, then you knew that timeline from, from in front. So there are questions to be asked. And of course, in fairness to the Police Service Commission, um, as it's presently constituted, they were thrown a curve by the parliament when the parliament enacted this hastily drafted and crafted legislation in June, you know, which changed the process yet again. You know, so, I mean, you, you can understand the, the dilemma they themselves would have been facing in that regard. Um, but notwithstanding that, I think there's really no excuse for the absolute disaster that this has turned out to be. I mean, there's no way that the members of the present Police Service Commission can come out of this unscathed. Now, we see today, let me put this up on the screen. We see today that Mr. Courtney A. McNish has resigned. He has, he has resigned with immediate effect. Do, do, mm -hmm. do you know what, 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 why that is? Do you know why you I, I have no idea what were his reasons for so doing, but mm -hmm. it, I have said, and I've been saying for the, you know, the past few days, I said the Police Service Commission owes the nation a duty to mm -hmm. come out and stand up and speak out and clarify certain issues because there were too many unknowns, too many uncertainties swirling around this whole process that left too much doubt in the minds of the public. You know, there have been polls on the radio stations and the television stations, and it is clear that 
public confidence in the institution of the P Police Service Commission is at an all-time low. It had plummeted. So therefore, they could not just sit by and, you know, hope that, you know, they could bury their heads in the sand and, you know, hope and pretend that this will go away. It wouldn't because it's swirling all around them. And then you have other parties and other persons making public statements, public pronouncements. So if you don't come out and clarify your position, then of course, maybe what might be misinformation out there is going to have sway because that's the only thing the public is hearing. And I called upon them repeatedly to come out and clarify the position and they did not. So as a result, you're seeing basically what might um, be the beginning of the end of the commission? Well, let's say, let's just say for example, right? And Gary, you can jump in whenever you want. Let's say I'm listening. Uh, the, the police service commission, right, um, has decided to go through all the candidates and Gary Griffith is the one that was selected. And then from there, does it go to the prime minister? Or, 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 or what all is right, the process so, okay, from? So what, what they have to do, they have to create a short list of candidates, all right? Mm. And they would then send that to the president. The president then in turn would send the first nominee, the top candidate, to the parliament for it mm. to be debated. Now, remember, the legislation had been changed and the constitution had been amended in order to allow for the removal of the prime ministerial veto. If we recall our history, you will recall mm -hmm. that prime ministerial veto was famously exercised by Prime Minister Manin, as he then was, when he vetoed the appointment of Stephen Williams as the commissioner of police. So mm -hmm. you had a scenario where Stephen Williams had been selected and he had been chosen as the top candidate and that went to the parliament and Prime Minister Manning then exercised his prime ministerial veto and he blocked the appointment of Stephen Williams as commissioner of police. Any reason for that, sir? Any, is there any reason you have any uh, idea? If, if, you, if you can find Mr. Manning, you can ask him that. Yeah, I'm just saying if you had an inclination. <laughs> Because they, uh, I saw Mr. Williams acting and acting and acting, and they keep refusing to give him the position. Right. Yes. 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 I will not. I will not condescend to particulars at all. As I say, Mr. Manning may be best suited to answer that question. So, the thing is, um, there were clamors and you know um, complaints from the public and from the opposition that look, um, this gives too much power to the prime minister, and it allows basically for you know the the prime minister's pick to be the choice. So they changed the legislation. But there's not really that much of a significant change because all it has now made it is a parliamentary majority. So in other words, whoever is in government, you can use your parliamentary majority to get who you want or to reject who you don't want for the position. And that's exactly our scenario now in Trinidad and Tobago. So that's how it is in terms of who determines that. So when you have the names going forward to the parliament, the it's voted upon, and I guess whoever has the majority will prevail. So, so at the end of the day, right, the prime minister is the ultimate decision maker as far as the commissioner of police is concerned. Well, the thing is, I mean, I want to be very careful in that the prime ministerial veto has been removed. But the point is, if the prime minister is in control of his parliament and is in control of his members of the House of Representatives, then effectively, I guess, whatever the prime minister would tell them in terms of, OK, yes, this is the one we're supporting or this is one we're not supporting, I guess that may hold sway. But on, on paper and as the legislation goes, the prime ministerial veto has been removed. But his cabinet has the power. That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. And whoever has the majority in parliament. So, so uh, Mr. George, if you sue your employer, right, so the police commission service is partially Gary Griffith employer, would that be an no, that, that's not that's not accurate. That's not accurate. Okay. Um, okay. The employer is wholly and solely the Ministry of National Security. Okay, so the Minister of National Security is is is, is solely his employer. The Ministry. So, the ministry. The PSC is, is the administration in charge under the National Security. Right. Yes. That that's a nice way of putting it. Yes. And so why would you have a beef 
with a person who is in charge of the ministry, who is your employer? Well, I mean, those are questions um, you should ask uh, Mr. Gary Griffith. <laughs> but I, I can't answer for him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, if you feel that you are being mistreated or ambushed or, or forced, being forced to alter your position that you should, you feel that you have the right to hold on to. I think it's your right to take action. Well, of say? course, of course, and everybody's. I mean, they, as I always tell people, the doors of the courts are open um, to everybody. You know, I mean, whether you have a good case, a bad case, whatever, the, the doors are open for you, you know. But the point is, um, you know, I guess one would always try to think things through to the end in the sense that you, you don't, you know, if you use an, an analogy in chess, you know, you, you, you have to be careful of the poison pawn because something that may look attractive at the start may end up being the, your downfall and to your detriment. So if it is that you know the, in the ultimate, the decision lies with those who control the parliament in terms of who has the majority. Then, of course, if you start off by picking a war or a fight with them, um, sometimes, you know, politicians remember these things. And when they have to vote on who they're choosing as the candidate, they might remember those things. So, you know, it, it's, it's a matter for you to decide how you um, pitch your battle. Well, I think it could be in terms of uh, he's showing them that he's not going to go down without a fight and he's going to stand up to them. No, I, I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. As I said, the, 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 yeah. the doors of the court are open for all. You know, um, <laughs> I, I, I suspect and I, I, I suspected this would happen. I also suspected when he went to, the, to that position that he was going to get, uh, he was swimming among sharks, barracudas and alligators who would try to ambush his, uh, his mission to transform the Polish force and get certain but things Gary, done. Do have, but Gary, do you have any evidence of that? Do there's there's, any there's, any a, there's of a lot that? of things happen and uh, Mr. Griffith himself will be able to explain that better. But I'm telling so, you, we've seen, so we've seen on, the, on the public domain where police went out and do their own thing, right? And create a, 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 a day of a, a traffic stop and all this kind of havoc without the police commissioner. Uh, uh, knowledge and they did a lot of things, you know. Uh, I mean, a lot of it, you know, you know, we cannot discuss it here, uh, because of the, <laughs> the, the legalities involved. But, um, but you know, listen to me, there was a reason why Gary Griffith was sent into the police force where he was the choice, why we supported him, uh, because uh, the, the objective was to bring somebody from outside who is not part of the the clan in there, or the go along, get along gang, like Ansem, like to put it. But and... um, I, I'll just I'll just give you um, one clarification on that point before I go. And gentlemen, you will have to excuse me because I'll have to leave very shortly because I have another interview to do um, with okay. the television station. But so um, on up. that point where um, Gary was just saying that his namesake, um, you know, was brought in and chosen and stuff like that. That is not quite so accurate. Let's remember when that selection process was completed, the last selection process, Gary Griffith was not the top candidate. He was not the second choice. He was not the third choice. He was the fourth choice on that list. And what happened is that the first choice was sent to the parliament, the government impugned and um, sought to discredit the process whereby that name was chosen and they rejected it. The second name candidate was submitted, the government rejected it. The third name candidate was submitted, the government rejected it. And it's the fourth named candidate that they chose, which was um, Mr. Griffith. So let's remember history correctly. You know, um, I, I always like to tell people, you know, it's good to be not just a student of law, but a student of history, because sometimes when we look back, we recognize that there are inaccuracies that are being portrayed and bandied about the place. But if you look to the records, you will find out what is the true story, right? And the fact is that his was not the first name on that order of merit list. It, it, it I might not be the first name I on have the to list. Thank you. No, just now, I, I have to thank you because unfortunately I have to exit. It's always right. nice chatting with you guys on the show.